Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's look at five age-worthy red wines that you don't necessarily need to age to enjoy. I have a feeling that this video might offend or even enrage some people, but I will say it anyway. I believe that idea of aging wine is overrated and really way overinflated. I have noticed in many online forums that some people can be outright offensive towards others who dared to open a certain wine too early. And now everything is lost, you have failed yourself, you have failed the winemaker and probably the entire wine community. But that is not the case. If I have said it once, I have said it a hundred times. Great wine will be great at any stage of its development, not only after a decade of sitting in your wine cellar. And believe it or not, nowadays many Oh, so many winemakers actually make wines to be enjoyable much earlier in their lives without necessarily sacrificing their aging potential. So let's take a look at red wines that typically show great aging potential but not necessarily need to be aged in order to be enjoyed. In the wine world, a great Chateau Neuf du Pape can be a delicacy. In my opinion, the majority of these wines will have the concentration of fruit, intensity of flavor, as well as quite elevated alcohol, thus directly contributing to their aging potential. However, the reality is that most of these wines will be enjoyed relatively young. The reason behind this lies in the fact that Chateau Neuf du Pape wines will usually have a ripe fruit profile mature and not too harsh tannin structure and juicy energy dense mouthfeel already upon their release which is why they rarely feel aggressive or closed in their youth in fact quite the opposite really it is also much harder to keep chateau neuf du pape wines in your collectible cellar because only very few of them have seen a serious price increase over the years and in the secondary market they are almost non-existent however i do wish to point out that there are certain vintages that are definitely worth guarding in your cellar for a longer period these wines may reveal more complex developed and quite different aroma profile that you are used to. Think of vintages such as 2010 and 2016. Amarone, no doubt, is one of the great wines of Italy. Because of its specific production involving drying grapes, all elements within the grapes increase in concentration, resulting in rich, dense and opulent wines with high levels of alcohol. All the very important factors to look for in the wine destined for aging. In fact, according to some of the comments in my previous video, people have been tasting Amarone wines dating back to the 60s and it has been a great experience. However, thanks to the same grape drying process known as Apacimento, Amarone wines are quite approachable in their youth as well. Not only do the tannins become softer and rounder during this process, but some producers also intentionally allow or sometimes simply cannot avoid the formation of botrytis during the grape drying period. In such cases, grapes and the resulting wine will have higher amounts of glycerol, resulting in wines with more roundness and sweetness on the palate, thus potentially overtaking some of the harsher edges of the wine. But it will also add that feel of extra ripeness and richness of fruit, which is something that we enjoy so much in young wines. What makes Brunello wines age-worthy is the fact that they are exceptional wines with elevated levels of tannins, high acidity and intense and concentrated fruit profile. The majority of these wines will age beautifully, however, it is also a wine that I don't mind enjoying upon its release. And the reason behind this is because Brunello di Montalcino wines must be aged for a minimum of four years before they can be released and reservas even longer than that. 
which is five years. As a result, when they hit the market, these wines often already show a quite ripe tannin structure, well-integrated acidity, and hints of balsamic and forest floor on the nose, which are the tertiary notes. Even upon their release, Brunello di Montalcino wines will rarely feel stiff or closed. Furthermore, many of them come from warmer vineyard sites with higher clay content in the soils, thus resulting in richer, riper, and more fleshier wine styles that even though can age, also offer a great immediate appeal. Top Cabernet Sauvignon wines from Napa Valley can age, no doubt. I have several wines in my own cellar and when they were 10 or more years old, I decided to start opening them. None of them really showed a lot of tertiary notes, they all were still very fresh and rich with bright fruit. The thing is, Cabernet Sauvignon is a late ripening grape. And because it did not always reach the perfect ripeness, in Bordeaux it was blended with other grapes, for example Merlot, to add a mid-palate and flesh to the bones. However, in Napa Valley, Cabernet Sauvignon rarely has problems reaching full ripeness thanks to the abundance of warmth and sunshine hours. Consequently, here Cabernet Sauvignon is often bottled as a monovarietal wine. It tends to show an opulent and really ripe dark fruit profile, as well as beautifully polished, plush tannin structure that is drinking quite nicely in their youth. Flavor-wise, these wines usually are quite open and ready to share all the dark and ripe fruit characters. Truly great wines to be enjoyed early in their life, while the best examples can be left in the cellar for decades. Similarly, as with Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, I don't have much doubt and I don't stress much about my Shiraz wines from Barossa Valley. I am quite confident that the density and concentration of these wines, as well as elevated tannin and alcohol levels, will help to preserve them for many years to come. However, young Barossa Valley Shiraz wines tend to offer so much appealing fruit and the best examples are also accompanied by great earthy, peppery, and almost meaty complexity. Some of these notes are actually expected from aged wines, and yet here they are adding an extra layer to the fruit. And what I particularly enjoy is the freshness and energy these wines possess upon their release, which is something that could be lost during extended cellaring time. That's why I don't really mind opening my Barossa Valley Shiraz wines quite early in their life. So here you go, these are great red wines showing good aging potential, however you don't necessarily need to age them in order to enjoy them. And I would also like to encourage you all to not live in fear in missing that perfect drinking window. And certainly don't deprive yourself of enjoying a fantastic wine that you opened with your friends or family by overthinking whether it was the right time to open it. Also, in my view, it is always better to open wine earlier in its life than later. However, if you prefer your wines more matured, who am I to tell you how to drink your bottles? So enjoy them in the way you like the best and maybe let me know in the comments which wines you think are age-worthy and yet are drinking quite nicely early in their life. Cheers! Whether you plan to store your wines for few weeks or decades, there's always a risk that your wine could go bad because of the improper storage. So here is a video that I made that will help you to store your wines with a peace of mind.